And so it is decreed by the, well, decree of Her Royal Majesty Queen Saffron that you, sir, shall be the newest villager to go ahead and join our growing village of Lakeburg. Welcome, welcome. You are a romantic, indecisive, proud man who's uh, 26 years old, so the queen's already side-eyeing you and you know, really hoping that you get to work with uh, maybe having a few of those kids. But we're going to go ahead and recruit you into the village. Ugh, three years before we see more villagers that we can just recruit. That's a little bit brutal. But we're going to welcome you in and we are going to see that you are indeed the uh, fisherman that we kind of need right now since, you know, considering we're almost out of fish. Look at that. <laughs> we're going to welcome you into the, the community and you are going to be maybe Fishfall. Uh, actually, are you quite dexterous? No, you are not. So Fishfall sounds pretty good for you because it looks like you can trip over things pretty easily. You do want to have a job that has to do with perception as well. And guess what? That includes being a fisher. So hopefully you'll be okay there. You are very intelligent, so you need to be good with your uh, perception of things, the ability to see things, and a little bit clever, intelligent, in order to be a good fisherman. And you, our wonderful, uh, let's see, Gaiman, hey, oh my gosh, Gaiman, okay, so this is going to be you reborn here, um, let's see, well, game fishfall, hen fishfall, rooster fishfall, we're gonna go, how about rooster fishfall? <laughs> It almost makes no sense, but I think it's going to be quite delightful. And the queen herself is quite delighted to go ahead and make more space and expand our fisherman's hut so that you can go and join none other than nature, nature lover, who is still here kicking. Maybe not for long, but still here kicking. <laughs> And actually has ridiculous expert perception and is not super intelligent. So that's why you're not like a perfect fisherman. But maybe we can actually now move him over. Nature, you'd be the perfect miner like mentor. Do we have kids in the mines? Okay, that actually sounds really <laughs> Do we have kids in the mines? Oh my gosh. Nature, can I bring you over here? And maybe you can come over. And do we have any kids who want... Uh, something to do with gaining, would it be perception skill? Val, do you mind popping over here for just a second? Sorry, I know we're kind of just like all over the place for the moment, but the children who would be mentored by nature lover here in the mines <laughs> would actually not gain as much as I thought they would. Nature, look, you can help us out with gathering more stuff in the mines, but it turns out the lack of, um, book smarts might be hurting you for helping us be a mentor so instead i'm going to throw you back into the fish market good luck uh but all right so welcome back everyone the queen has been in a bit of a tizzy because it's been very busy the last little while trying to keep track of everyone and make sure that this village will actually endure and survive through the ages. She has people absolutely fussing at her about all of this and all of that, and now we need to go ahead and see if we can have Rooster Fishfall find his perfect future whoever. And we also have these children who we have a need mentored. It's enough to give her the fainting fits, poor Queen Saffron, except for the fact that she is um, determined to go ahead and make sure we make the most money possible and the most shiny prestigious gemstones. As it just occurred to me, these prestige bits actually do look like gemstones because, I mean, the, literally what they are, look, they're glowing, they're sparkling. Uh, they're everything that Her Majesty could want. So we're going to try to gain some more of those too. Uh, but we're going to be moving pretty quickly now that we know how things move. So I'm just going to grab the kids and put them where they're going to make uh, good decisions in the future. Like being a healer? Oh my gosh, Vale! Vale Rat Healer! You already have 10 dexterity just right out of the gate. All right, we've got to make sure that you have a good mentor. Uh, Chaotic, I think that you're actually the best at this. So we're going to give you a new student. <gasps> Look at that, and Chaotic can help increase their aspiration to become a very knowledgeable young fella. Uh, I mean, a little bit, at least. And the knowledge quite a bit. Oh, that's gonna be so exciting. Vale, good luck. Gain a lot of knowledge, and by the time you grow up, you might help cure the plague or something. Meanwhile, Spacey also has the potential to be a healer, but wants to be a guard. So we are gonna need guards. You do wanna do something strong in life. 
you are fairly strong with level eight strength. Uh, so you could be a knight or because you're very dexterous, you could also be a guard. So you know what? Spacey, it's not gonna be obvious to you at first, but I'm actually gonna have you come over and you're going to apprentice here at the forge so that you can gain more weapons mastery under none other than Dear Iron Bones. What a name. That's a pretty awesome name. I'm pretty proud of that actually. <laughs> and finally, her majesty is going to like uh, down that very strong tea of hers as we reject this 55 year old ugly romantic who's kind. <laughs> a kind 55 year old romantic thief <laughs> who's like 30 years older than Rooster. No. Ugh. But instead, we actually have a new builder <gasps> who could also be a dancer? Wait, for entertainment? Hold up here. Hold up here. He likes fishing and also public executions. We kind of side eye that, but it would be an excellent match with our brand new rooster. So let's see, fishing, public executions, poetry. Doesn't like art of war, divination, or gossip. Okay. Uh, uh let's see. Uh, uh, doesn't like. It does like fishing. Okay, go. And then how about attending the next public execution together? Apparently that's going to make him pretty happy. Doesn't like war. Does like divination? Oh. Dang it! I got it backwards. That's all right. The love meter was still high enough to go ahead and welcome in a new villager right away, which is very good. And this is actually going to be, let's see, um, Abion after Abby. Abion, and we're going to have a tap dancer. Like, what's a dance? A, a Dian Gala? Like, what are jazz? That's not dance. Disco? Oh, that's the only thing that's coming to mind because my dad loved doing disco dancing when he was like very young. <laughs> oh my word. Yeah, look, Abby, very wonderful to see you again, my wonderful friend. I'm so glad that you have had so many opportunities over the years to take on new careers. And now I guess you're gonna be a disco dancer because of course, a queen who loves all things that glitter and shine would also immensely love the way that, you know, I guess disco balls send off all sorts of light, I guess. Uh, also, you may note that right now, without your assistance, the entertainment is only at 20%. But when we have none other than disco dancer Abion come and join us, it actually bumps all the way up to 90%. There is now a 10% chance that all of the villagers might become amused, which would give them more morale and give the artisans more satisfaction. Wow, I didn't expect to get a disco tap dancer so early in the morning, but here we are. Also, we shall now let time pass. <laughs> now that we have finally managed to accomplish quite a bit and we'll keep an eye on any like necessary things that might pop up. Woo! All right, so that's not what I meant by necessary things. <laughs> Uh, well, the good news is that, um, oh, Galactic Fairy, you just became a parent. Congratulations. Butternut, you have a younger sibling. Your younger sibling, oh my word, is like, wow. That's amazing. Okay. Ah! Okay, well, burning, wait, bunning the witches? Hold up here. Uh, for some time now, I was making sure it was appropriate to read on YouTube. <laughs> for some time now, two gastronomic schools, which, you know, is foodie people, have been fighting about the idea of stuffing a local bun with pineapple. Oh, there's a kitty! Oh, hi, kitty! Okay, actually, um, pineapple buns are actually really delicious. My beloved husband, Chips, and I ate some while we were in Taiwan, and I dream about those. They were vegan pineapple buns from a tiny shop that a, a woman was running her vegan bakery out of. It was itty bitty, like the, honestly, I'm, I'm looking over, it was literally the size of my closet. And then she had like her apartment, I think in the back where she cooked all of the, the goods. And she had these tiny little display cases that were so carefully polished and these delicious vegan treats. 
And she was so nervous when we walked in because she didn't speak English. And so it was a big relief when Chips could speak Chinese with her. <laughs> she was so relieved she gave us samples because she was like panicking over what to do because she didn't speak any English. And she was really sweet. And the point being, her pineapple buns, we still talk about all these years later because they were so good. So there may be street fights being broken up about whether or not pineapple should go in buns. It's pushing Lakeburg to the brink of a civil war. Will we accept novelty? Will people become even more entertained for the next almost year? And will Mal become inspired? Or if we do that, <gasps> Tia will leave. Our blacksmith is so offended by the idea of pineapple buns. She's just gonna leave. Even though she's our max level weapons expert. But Mal would leave if we don't say no. And she's our only innkeeper, I think. Maybe. I can't check. Uh, uh, they're actually really close in age. It's just Mal's aging a little heavier. <clears throat> no, pineapple buns. I, I, I accept. I'm going to defend tradition. Um, or not defend tradition. We're going to accept novelty. Boy, I wish I was defending tradition, though, because that's a beautiful faith bonus. But no, no, no. We must live our truth. Pineapple buns it is. Uh, bye, Tia! <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, well. You know, Tia, we can at least, maybe we'll rename this baby now to Tia, uh, Tia Berry. Let's see. I'm trying to make sure that you have a fair shot. Well, actually, I guess you did, and you you did move out. But you know what? Uh, you know what? Never mind. That's how we're gonna remember you, Tia. Is we're gonna remember. Yeah, pineapple, pineapple berry. That is this child. Somehow, in some small way, she actually happens to carry on your legacy. And one day, she actually may grow up to be an innkeeper if she gains any interest in food whatsoever. Her charisma's through the roof. We'll have to see what happens. Uh, I think that, good gravy. Galactic and Evergreen, what is it with you guys having babies that have ridiculous charisma? I think it's because they have good charisma too. The queen likes this. She says have more babies, have a house expansion. Meanwhile, I think that we just had like some more kidlets pop up. Ooh, and we have some new people. Let's see, Hunter, single. Uh, oh, oh. No, are you a new parent? Oh my gosh. Beetle, I'm so sorry. Like, literally just had their child. Just had Ziva. Itty bitty baby. Um, Pandora, their elder daughter, already moved out. And now Tia just left. Left with a three-year-old Ziva still in Beetle's arms. He is now heartbroken and uh, over this divorce and, and a young parent who just is all by himself. Is is that the way that fate will be forever? Let's see, you like the art of war painting public? Uh, let's see, uh, I don't think you're gonna be able to be paired off with beloved there, sorry about that. Hang in there, Beetle. Hopefully we will find you some, some hope in the future. But for now, beloved silkfish. Oh, the child of grace Gray Silkflea and Ariel Silkflea. Oh, wait, actually, those are your grandparents. The child of Silene Silkflea and Rain Glowleaf, our healer. Um, you're a little bit simple, so your intelligence maybe took a bit of a hit there, but you'd be a good innkeeper? Okay, you really don't have a lot going for you in the food department. You have a ton of charisma, though. And you've got a little bit of nature. I think I'm gonna have to squeak you into something. Um, what does the queen need mo more of? Do we even have, li yeah, we have livestock now. They go moo, they're over here. <laughs> All right, what do we need more of? Livestock, eh, jewels, they're actually kind of high on that. Um, we're doing okay on a whole bunch of things, but I guess if we're gonna make you happy, you can come, okay, Penny's, Penny's feeling the age, I think, of, oh wow. Okay, Penny might need, uh, replay or ahem, assistant. So you can go ahead and pop on in and we'll hopefully see you like settle into your career there, I suppose. All right, well, Wistybell. 
You are well-mannered, beautiful, and you're feeling super efficient. You have a really high charisma. You want to do something with food. But I think that Her Royal Majesty is eyeing up the fact that you already are a little persuasive. And you're very charismatic. So guess what? Um, we're going to see if we can make you possibly consider the position of being a... Maybe? Maybe? You can, okay, actually, that doesn't get your persuasion up very much because neither Tian or Art can teach you very much. <sighs> All right, let's see. Where can I get persuasion? Persuasion. Persuasion. Obviously not in the Assassin's Guild. Thank you very much. I'm trying to find her a good spot. Nature, perception, food, athletics, perception, perception, weapons mastery. Gosh darn it, I need to keep a list so we can do this a little faster. Ah! Oh wait, is this persuasion? Sky? Ooh, here we go, Wisty. You're gonna, oh my gosh, and Light is actually like 10 intelligence. You can get no persuasion from him though. Light, why? Because you have zero persuasion. Why do I have you as the chancellor? <gasps> oh my word, all right, look. Titian's not the best at it, but he can give you at least a little bit there. We're just gonna have to cross our fingers and hope that works. Uh, and while the queen is sighing heavily over the state of her merchant guild, at least we can go ahead and maybe spend a bit of the gold that we have been collecting, finally, to upgrade the place so that it can start making more gold. Oh, that's really nice. 58 and 25 now? <gasps> Let's use some more of our builder's tickets and upgrade it again. And now... <gasps> Yay! a whole bunch of builders tickets and we're up to 87 that is so much better than where we were oh my gosh can i use more on them we can <gasps> okay the queen takes back anything she may have said about your intelligence titian because now you're gaining over a hundred gold every every like 109 ish or like 200 days so that okay that's not as much as the queen hoped for but i'm sure it'll add up over time Okay, there we go. We literally just spent all of our builder's tickets on the Merchant's Guild. I don't think that Her Royal Majesty has any problem with that. Uh, all right. Can we trade with the Llama? The Llama wants a lot of apple cider that we don't have, and I am absolutely not trading our tools for broccoli. However, 19 rocks for 13 jewelry. <laughs> Somebody got it backwards, all right. Meanwhile, beloved, can we find you a partner? Wait, who do we need? The queen kind of cares about that. Oh yeah, our blacksmith kind of dipped. Um, can you find a, a blacksmith by chance? Let us see. No, thank you. Uh, also bad affinity. Chancellor, minor, no. Aww, you guys would have excellent affinity. And she's pretty strong. She'd be a good farmer, butcher, or livestock farmer. None of the things we were really going for. But you know what, beloved? You know what? Especially because we're out of hearts anyway. Let's try this. Let's try and see if you have now found your own beloved. So she likes muscles, kittens, and fashion. Muscles, kittens, fashion. Muscles, kittens, fashion, but she doesn't like meditating a public executions for people who had a duel to the death. Muscles, kittens, fashion. She doesn't like public executions. Okay, good. Um, she likes muscles. And she likes fashion. Yes! Ah, <sighs> love meter, set to excellent. Beloved, Fiona. Or, well, I guess you're about to get, like, a new name. Let's go ahead and you're gonna be... Oh, look, I'm just gonna go ahead and name you Turnip. Like, your last name. Uh, Turnip Leaf. Ha! <laughs> uh, you are proud, depressive, and ill-mannered. And you are going to be named after Pixel Sorrel. So, I think we're gonna name you Pixel Turnip Leaf. That is inspired, if you ask me. <laughs> oh, and let's get you over to the farm. Eh, like, eh, okay, I just realized the farm is losing its vegetables. Okay, the queen went over to the farm to go ahead and have this new turnip leaf, madame, pixel turnip leaf, come and work at the farm, only to find that the farmers are literally throwing the vegetables on the ground. What? What? Same with the wood. Stock that. Oh my gosh. All right. Now she had to spend some of her precious, precious, like, gold going ahead and making sure that we, we had enough room to store all of the excess. 
All right, in you go, Pixel. How's your intelligence? Not high, don't worry. You're not gonna be a mentor then. Uh, we do have some builder's tickets, but if I was gonna use the builder's tickets on anything right now, we need a better margin on the tools and we need a better margin on the weapons that we're pulling in. So can we afford to do either of those things? We can on tools, yes, yes we can. And actually we could upgrade again. How's the margin now? Still small. Okay, okay, let's see. Oh, Her Royal Majesty. I know we don't have a lot of the money, but we kind of got to do it if we want to like have the tools to keep the kingdom going. Oof. Eh. And we're going to have to find somebody who can help us make weapons soon. If it's not one thing, it's another. But at least we can go ahead and trade. Oh, yes! Meat for weapons! We needed that! And we have some chairs, but we don't have enough chairs to be able to give you all of them, Bianca, honestly. Especially because I think we still need to... Yeah, we need to expand the granary for chairs. I don't think that makes Her Majesty happy. <laughs> oh, and the children already are ready to go ahead and train up in their different spots. But we have a merchant, a future merchant here with Butternut Berry. Having grown up enough, we're not going to pay attention to the house. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. We might have to pay attention to the house of the Woo of the Who. Oh, okay. Butternut, you come over here. Don't don't you look over there. Don't you worry about that. Um, and I'm gonna get the kids squared away into what they need to be in. And then we might see if now that Beetle is feeling a bit better and his child is growing up, we might be able to find another person to help us out with the whole faith thing. Oh my gosh. I think we need somebody who's either the most faithful, perfect priest S or priest ever, or we need somebody to maintain the house of the woo of the who's. Yeah. I guess ethics. <laughs> uh, and at least we can go ahead and we can start building a few of the other things that the queen needs. Uh, how are we doing on protection? Oh dear, now we're starting to get robbed and stabbed in the back. Okay. Yeah, no wonder the queen goes to lay down after all of this chaos all the time. <gasps> yes! Look at the jewelry turn into 860 gold. I told you guys that was gonna be useful. I told you it was gonna be useful. Ah. <sighs> we can use that gold to go ahead and expand the, um, the fact that we're kind of maxing out on a whole bunch of very important things like stone and iron. And the queen wants more jewelry. She really does. But we probably should expand. Never mind, she's gonna do jewelry. <laughs> ah, all right. Ah, wow. Yeah. We're gonna have to do something about this whole crisis of faith thing, but maybe we'll be able to find the perfect priestess next time. So I'll see you guys then. Bye bye. Or, I, oh dear. I guess we could also find the perfect person to work at the house of the Woo of the Who. You know? We'll circle back to that.